What is up everybody and welcome back to another episode of Tattoo Critiques. This week we're going to be diving into video game tattoos, something I really enjoy, so I'm pretty excited to see what we've got this week. Let's not waste any more time and get right into it. The first tattoo we have sent in is from Corey Engel. And Corey, you sent in this Xbox controller monster type of deal. Uh, it looks pretty cool. You mentioned that you really like this tattoo as well, and you were wondering if you should get another artist to continue this project or if you should stick with the same one. I mean, if you like this tattoo, why would you go somewhere else? It's on your body after all, and you have to live with it. But since you sent it in, let me go ahead and give you my thoughts. My first impression is I think the design is very cool, and you're probably not gonna find anyone with a tattoo that's similar. So I don't know if this was your idea or the artist, but it's a cool concept nonetheless. I like how the artist took out the directional pad and put an eyeball in his place. I also like the thin line weight that the artist put in the gums of the monster. It really helps show the shape of the gums. I like how the artist kept the overall Xbox theme throughout this tattoo, with the black and neon green, as well as the technical application that is applied in this tattoo. When you look at the flames in the background, you see a thin gray wash outline holding those flames together. But you can barely see that gray wash outline, and I think the artist did an exceptional job masking that. And the artist used the same technique on those pixels in the background, keeping them nice and tidy. Same thing with the gray wash outline around the glare in the middle of the controller on that Xbox logo. These thinner gray wash outlines are used to separate a lot of lighter tones instead of using a thick, bold outline. As far as the outline around the rest of the tattoo, it is mid-heel, so it's hard to tell, but it does look like it's a lot thicker than those gray wash outlines. However, there are a couple areas I wish they were a little bit cleaner. Around the eye for one, and around the buttons, I do wish that outline was just a bit thicker. My one gripe about this tattoo is I wish there were more solid black in this entire thing. When you look to the monster's nostrils, you can tell that's solid black. I wish that black was used all over this tattoo. It would keep it from just being so flat. But overall, Corey, I like this tattoo and I think it's pretty solid. And if you're gonna go back to this artist in the future for more tattoos, maybe you suggest that they add in a little bit extra solid black to make this thing really pop. So thanks a lot, Corey, for sending that in. All right, the next tattoo sent in is from Nikki. And Nikki, you sent in this Cozy Grove logo tattoo. Now, I'm not sure if you'll still be a fan of Cozy Grove in 30 years, but who am I to say? It may be the next Mario. But let's talk about the technical application of this tattoo. First off, I think this tattoo is pretty bold. You have some nice contrast interesting colors in this tattoo, the teal and the pink, work very well with each other. However, there are a couple small things that I want to point out. The first one being the little fuzziness happening on the top part of this tattoo. And I really can't tell if that's a blowout or if the artist just went outside the lines, giving you a little extra than what you paid for. And if that's the case, you know we gotta get that guy a coloring book. Another small issue I see is the eyes are two different sizes, and I did have to look that up to make sure that they weren't supposed to be that way, and they are not. That could end up being a really simple fix, just extending that eye on the right side up just a bit, and maybe fattening that left eye. The two logs that are crossing on the bottom have poor spacing and they aren't exactly parallel, and it seems like those logs are sitting a bit too close to that face. What has one thumb in is awesome? This guy. <laughs> if I were the one doing the tattoo, I would have blended out that teal and pink just a bit more to the skin tone, but again, it's not bad. Now I know it seems like I'm nitpicking, but it is a very small tattoo, so we don't have much to work with. Every little thing matters when you have a small tattoo like this. Overall, this is a cute tattoo. I just think it needs a little bit of work. But thank you so much, Nikki, for sending that in. All right, the next tattoo sent in is from Matthew R. And Matt, you sent in this little Spyro the Dragon tattoo, along with a healed photo of this tattoo as well. You've mentioned this tattoo is 10 years old, so you've had some time to live with it. If we look at the fresh tattoo, the first thing I notice is this giant bruise that's happening around the entire outside of the tattoo. That must have hurt like hell. But other than that, let's talk about the actual technique of this spiral. Looking at the fresh tattoo, you can tell that these colors were applied pretty well, but when we look at the healed version of this tattoo, you can tell that a lot of those light tones faded away, leaving us with kind of a washed out version of that spiral. This is why having contrast is so important in your tattoos. If you have a tattoo with nothing but light tones, you can almost expect it to wash away in the future. Keep that in mind when you see tattoos that are done with nothing but light tones. Those tattoos are probably going to fade out a lot faster than a tattoo that has heavy contrast. These dark purples are saving this spiral right now. Because if they weren't in there, we'd have an invisible dragon. Now I can't blame all of that on light tones. If a tattooer really knows what they're doing, they could get those light tones to stick for years to come. If we look at the wings of Spyro, we can tell that even that dark color faded quite a bit over time. Those dark colors are usually the ones that stay they bold the longest. So by that logic, I can tell that the tattooer probably didn't have the best technique in applying these colors. All right, hold on. I'm starting to notice some inconsistencies in these two photos. You mentioned this is a 10 year old tattoo, but I'm definitely seeing some rework happening here or some touch up. So I'm very curious about the yellow that's happening in the healed version of this tattoo because I don't see this yellow in the fresh version. I only see the little bit of orangey browns happening. 
Clearly those have faded away, but for some reason there's yellow left over. Something doesn't add up. There's a heavy drop shadow happening on the healed version of this tattoo that wasn't there on the fresh version, so I can tell you touch this up at least once. Which leads me to wonder why you didn't touch up the rest of this dragon, or why you only decided to add yellow and an odd drop shadow that doesn't make sense. If anything, that light purple and the wings are what needed it the most. Clearly this tattoo needs another touch up, but I would definitely be going to a new artist at this point. Because if you did get this tattoo touched up again, they didn't really add anything to it more so than the first time. So you've got one more shot at this, Matthew. Browse some portfolios and go to a tattooer who knows how to put in color. It just needs a little love. But thank you so much for sending that in and letting me talk about it. All right, the next tattoo sent in is from Chris Martin. And Chris, you sent in this Mario leg tattoo. Right off the bat, my eyes get drawn to this weird pixelation happening at the bottom in this tube. It looks very strange. It kind of looks like some cross stitches happening going up that tube. I'm assuming the artist wanted to turn it into pixels, but it really doesn't read that way. If we take a look back at that Xbox controller from the first submission, you can see a prime example of how those pixels should be executed. There's just a lack of line weight and a lack of contrast happening in this entire tattoo. This may end up like our buddy Spyro. The outline is fairly weak. I would have loved to see some sort of heavy outline around this entire tattoo. As it is an animation, it needs some sort of line weight. Even if it's just on the perimeter of everything on here, it would just help out so much. Everything just seems a bit shaky. It almost seems like the artist may have been in a rush to get this thing finished. Or they could be new. I think maybe even some background could help out this tattoo a bit. Some soft blues, clouds, things you see in the actual Mario game would just help tie this together. But I wouldn't necessarily trust this artist with that. Now I love Mario and Nintendo, but this tattoo just doesn't really hit home for me. There's just something about it that seems flat and patchy. I'm not saying this tattoo can't be saved, I'm just suggesting maybe find a new artist. But thank you Chris for sending this in and letting me talk about it. All right, the next tattoo sent in is from Eric Jackman. And Eric, you sent in this Castlevania tattoo that you said I could absolutely destroy. Don't worry, my guy, I got you. My first impressions are, it looks like this tattooer kind of sped through this tattoo. And you mentioned it was only seven hours, so. Honestly, this is one of those tattoos that should take probably double the amount of time. There's a lot of layers happening here, and for the face alone, I probably would have spent a few hours. And the artist had the opportunity to give it some depth but it just comes off as three stacked flat images. You've got the person in front, the clock, and then the castle. It just comes off as very drab. And I drew bats like that in first grade. There are needle marks everywhere in this tattoo, and generally that's something I look for and like. But with these needle marks, you can tell the direction in which the tattoo artist was pushing, and they are all over the place. There's no one direction of flow anywhere in this tattoo. The clouds in the back kind of just engulf the castle. They don't let it breathe. There's not enough of the castle hanging out. There's not a whole lot of skin tone or light shades. There's just a lot of dark shades and black. I'm not exactly sure what's happening on the right side of this tattoo. Kind of looks like a shield of some sort uh, hanging out on the side, but again, I'm just not too familiar with the game to be able to tell what that is. However, it is a tattoo and it should read easily. Someone looking at your tattoo who doesn't have any clue what Castlevania is should be able to tell exactly what's going on. And there's just a lot of white in places that just don't belong. There's just a lot of rough things happening in this entire tattoo. But thank you so much, Eric, for sending it in and letting me take a peek. All right, that's going to wrap it up for the critiques this week. But before we go, I want to bring up my favorite tattoo of the episode, which was sent in from Corey Angle with this sweet Xbox Monster Remote. I think this tattoo just had a lot of right things going for it and a lot of good technical skills that we didn't see in a lot of other tattoos this week. Another thing I really liked about this tattoo is it actually felt like an original piece of artwork, where the other tattoos that we saw kind of just felt like copies and it looked like the artists were just rushing through them. And you're likely not gonna see another one like this out in the wild, unless of course somebody copies this one. So congratulations, Corey, on the dope tattoo and being this week's winner. Thank you so much for sending that in. All right, guys, before we wrap this up, I wanna share with you a tattooer who I think you should be following and does an exceptional job with video game tattoos. And that person is Billy Tainos out of Brisbane, Australia. Billy was actually the inspiration for this episode because I stumbled across his page on Instagram earlier. Now, I know a lot of you guys like to play video games, as do I, so I think you'll really appreciate the work that he's putting out. When looking at Billy's work, pay close attention to his outlines. This is something we've covered numerous times on past videos. When tattooing illustrative or anime characters, having bold line weights really help them pop, and you can really tell Billy knows when and how to use those outlines. We saw a couple artists this week who attempted the 8-bit pixelated technique, but when looking through Billy's work, you can tell this is a concept that he's very comfortable with. 
whether that's creating an entire 8-bit character or implementing that technique into a standard illustrative tattoo. Billy's got it down. So head on over to Billy's page, give him a follow, and let him know I sent you. I promise you won't be disappointed. Now that's going to be it for this week's episode, but I do want to thank you guys so much for sticking around to the very end of the video. And if you want to see your tattoos critiqued in a future episode, you can do so by sending them to ponycritiques at gmail.com. Be sure to label whether or not you're an artist or collector, and maybe we'll see them on a future episode. Until then, see you next week.